Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Welcome back for another episode of The Author's Tea. For those of you who may not know me and those of you who do, I'll reintroduce myself again for the 100,000th time. I am Kristen R. Harris and I am the creator of The Author's Tea. And I created The Author's Tea because I know some fabulous and amazing authors, women authors to be exact, and they have some phenomenal stories to share. And I wanted to open up my platform so that you could get to know them. You could get to know their stories and support them. It's not all about us spilling all the tea because we won't spill all the tea, but we want you to go out and support these authors. And so I'm super excited today because we have an author who will be coming with us to spill the tea. I got my About That Wife Life mug today because it's going to be perfect. She has her wifey mug. It's such a sweet <laughs> conversation. Um, I have today joining me, I have the pleasure of sitting down and talking to Dominique McGee. Hey, Dominique, thank you so hey, much for joining the Authors Tea. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. Yes, yes. I, I appreciate you joining us. Um, I always let everyone who comes through the Authors Tea, I let them to introduce themselves because I feel like you know yourself better than anyone else. But um, I am going to share a, a, just a little bit about how I met Dominique. I think I met you through Ariel, if I'm not mistaken, initially before yeah. we ended up at the same church together and all that. I think I met you through Ariel, but um, Dominique actually took my Scribe Tribe course as well. And so her Ooh. book, which we'll get into shortly, Arise, the uh, Devotional for Warrior Wives. This this is an amazing book, by the way. We're going to talk about it. But before we get into that, um, I just, th this book is a product of the Scribe Tribe. So I'm super excited. Anytime someone who has journeyed through that course, who I have had the, the, the pleasure of personally working with, it just brings me so much joy to see the fruit of their labor come. And so I'm so proud of you and so excited to get into everything that Arise is about. But in the meantime, tell us a little bit about who you are and what can we learn about Dominique today? All right. Um, well, my name is uh, Dominique and I am a wife of two and a half years and I have a beautiful one-year-old daughter. I am uh, currently the CEO and founder of Woman of Gold. And um, in that business, I uh, help women to discover the power within themselves to uh, walk in purpose, conquering entrepreneurship and career goals. Um, and I am also a, a paparazzi jewelry consultant um, as well. And I am the author of uh, my first devotional, Arise, the Devotional for Warrior Wives. Yes, yes. That's amazing. That's a lot of um, amazing things going on. So you are a wife and a mom. You didn't you didn't include that part. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Oh, you missed. Okay, then maybe that's when I was trying to share the, the broadcast out. I apologize. Okay, so she is a wife and she's a mom. So I'll say it again because I know that those two jobs are probably two of the biggest jobs that you have. And I understand because I wear those hats as well. So I appreciate um, you for coming on and sharing because we're going to get into your your marriage journey and, and how this book was birthed. Um, how long have you been married, you and your husband? So our anniversary is in November. So that would make us about two and a half years old. Okay, two and a half years old. So you're still yeah. under that... Um, I think I, like when I listen to these marriage groups and things like we, you got to make it to either year five or year seven. And then they're like, OK, now you're a vet in the game. So now you're still um, a newbie, which I think is amazing because the perspective that you bring in this book um, really come from a place of being in, in a in a new marriage. And I can attest to the fact that new marriages like those first five years. And for us, I would say it was the first seven. Those are some of the toughest years. And mm -hmm. I was actually going to get into that a little later, but I'll go ahead and say this. As I was reading this book, first of all, Arise, the, the Devotional for Warrior Wives. Um, I don't say this every time someone comes on the author's tea, I'm going to be honest, but this <laughs> book is amazing. It is. Um, oh. As I was reading this book, I was thinking about 
all of the the women, all of the wives that I know who I need to bless with a copy of this book because I do think that it has the power to just transform their thinking and to transform them as a wife. So mm -hmm. I, I applaud you for that. So um, I want to get right into it. Uh, I know you wrote this book for wives, but if you could like really describe the wife who this book is for, what would you say about her? Like, how would you describe her? Hmm. I would say that I wrote this book for the wife who is kind of under the umbrella of people saying, oh, you're, you're a newlywed. So you should be in the honeymoon stage. This is, this is the, the, the easy part for you. This is, this is the good stuff. But really, you know, she is going through a tough time navigating, okay, you know, I, I, I married the love of my life and we're having issues right now. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, I'm questioning whether or not, you know, this this is supposed to be the 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 newlywed the honey the honeymoon stage. So this is for the wife who who is you know experiencing the the new hurdles um, that come in marriage. Experiencing okay, it was it was one way before we were married, mm -hmm. and now we're together and we're under the the same roof. I'm seeing different things about him. He's seeing different things about me and, and, and I'm struggling. I'm mm -hmm. struggling. You know, um, I, it's for the wife that says, you know what? I have some issues that I brought, that I brought into my marriage. He has some issues that he brought into this marriage. So this is for the wife that, that needs that comfort. And it's to remind her that there was a purpose, um, in her marriage and that she's not the only one that, that might be going through this. Great. Um, I want to go back to something that you just said. Um, kind of walk us through for you. What is the difference in um, being married versus when you weren't married? Because I hear so many people say that. Well, I mean, what's the sense of getting married? We're all we're pretty much like we're married. We do everything that married people do. So, touch on that a little bit. Like, what does that look like? Like what, what, what are the differences that you experienced? Okay. So I would say number one, there is definitely a difference spiritually mm -hmm. because when you get married, it's, it's no longer the, the two of you, you become one. Yeah. So, so spiritually, that opens up another realm of, you know, uh, another realm of of demons, another realm of, you know, of of angels. It's 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 different. It's different spiritually because you're you're not two. You're one. And I would say for me, um, it it was definitely different because, like I said, you know you i i learned things um different things about uh my partner my husband the good and the bad mm -hmm. and things that 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 i didn't know you know before before we got married and even still like you're you're evolving you're evolving as a person so there's always going to be something new that you're going to learn about your partner and the fact that you're married the fact that you're, you know, that you're living together under one roof and you're one, you're you're evolving. You're you're gonna you're gonna find out different things about each other. Absolutely. And I think that um, going back to what you said about the two becoming the one, you know, I like to share the example all the time. And I think I even shared this when I sat down with you on your um on, on your interview that I love to explain to people that you know, the two becoming one, if we think about it, even outside of the spiritual and we think about it, like in the physical, you take two people and you bring their entire frame of reference, all of the things that all of their morals, their education, their values, their character traits, you bring all of that 
from this person and you bring all of it from this other person and you try to squeeze it into one person. Well, when you were unmarried, you could be all of who you were with all that stuff and they could be all of who they were with all of their stuff. But when you come together as one, some of that stuff has to shake off because um, yeah, it yeah. just doesn't go with one person and there's not room enough for it to fit. And many times I think, you know, we come into it and we're like, well, look, this is who I've been for 28 years of my life. And he's like, this is who I've been for 28 years of my life. I've been good. My mama liked it. My daddy liked it. Nobody has a problem. But now you got a problem. Yeah, I got a problem because we got to occupy space together. Like nobody else was in this covenant with you. And so they didn't understand how irritating this is. And so, yeah, I totally agree with you. It is much different. And it definitely, as someone just said, takes the warfare to another level. So I, I love to touch on that because I hear that so often. I hear people saying, oh, it's not a difference. You know, we, we're just like we're married. No, baby. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. definitely <laughs> Yeah, and adding on to that, because like you said, like when you're not married, you you technically you have the ability to opt out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, yeah, to opt out of that right. thing. Yeah. And so the book really does dive into that because you you gotta you gotta mature. Like I had to learn that myself. I had to say, you know, well those things about me that I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not changing this. This is me. He's going to have to accept me for who I am. I really had to mature. And mm -hmm. my marriage has taught me that like, if you, if, and I, and I, and I've been hearing this a lot lately, lately, if you want something different in your marriage, you got to do something different. Yes, so, yes. you know, if that means like letting go uh, uh, of your attitude, if that means like, like evolving and maturing, maturing honey so so be it you you have to let go of that stuff good good stuff good stuff so immediately upon opening up this book arise um you get right into deborah from the bible being the inspiration for this book what mm -hmm. is it about her that triggered um you writing this book and really stirred up your creativity to pen this piece well, first of all, <laughs> I hear so much about um, the virtuous wife, the Proverbs 31 wife, which is which is awesome. She's a great woman. And I just feel like Deborah, I, I people say Deborah and I like to say Deborah. So I hope I, know, I hope that doesn't no, throw no, anybody no, off. <laughs> no, let me tell you, I was like, maybe I need to look this up because I wonder if it's Deborah. I said that as I was reading it and I was like, well, I'm uh -huh. going to go with Deborah and then she'll correct me if it's wrong. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's either way, but I like to say Deborah. Okay. But, you know, she is to me like one of the dopest wives in the Bible. This woman, like I'm telling you, she was a judge. She was a counselor. She was, um, she was a warrior. She, you know, sh to me, she embodies the, 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 the boss wife, the, the, the boss wife, the, the spiritual leader, the, uh, the mother, the leader. She embodies that, and so, um. In the um, in the back of the book, I say that this book is based off of the example and the command of Deborah. And the command of Deborah was to arise. Um, you know, I'm 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 really big on um, spiritual realm and spiritual warfare. And so, when I ima imagine Deborah uh, uh, saying "arise," to me, that that as a wife that would awaken you that would make you arise out of out of this this place of uh desolation this place of uh dry bones it would make help help you to snap out of it and and you know like get into get get it together because you are a warrior so i hope that answers your question absolutely absolutely i was really intrigued i'm gonna be honest i can't say i know a whole lot about her and so anytime i read something and it, it sparks my interest i'm like okay that'll be my next study because the way i do my my bible study i just kind of i let god lead me to like various books and so right now i'm like really going through esther before that i was in um 
Nehemiah. And oh my God, that was a whole amazing <laughs> place to be a lot of revelation. So when I read about her, I was like, oh, okay, you know what? When I'm done, let me go read up on, on her and just learn more about her to see like why she's this warrior wife. You know, I was really, really intrigued. Um, so you, you, you touch on a lot of subjects in here, like different things that really affect marriages and, um, collectively and individually. Was this book birthed from a, a personal place in your marriage? Like, can you, can you say that you've journeyed through every single thing that you touched on in this book? Or did you just kind of talk from a, a generally speaking place from things that you see other people going through or that things that you know are just important in marriage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can definitely say that I wrote this book from a, a personal place. Um, there were times where, you know, I, I had to, to arise and I'm just like, you know what, if, if God can, can wake me up and shift things in my marriage, I need to be able to share that with, with other women. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, this, def this book was definitely, everything in it is birthed from a, a personal place. Do you think, because I know going back to um, you, like you said, you're, you're big on the, the spirit realm and the, and the spiritual warfare. Um, <laughs> I know sometimes because, because of the work that I do and I can definitely relate, um, some days I'm just like, man, because I know what I'm doing is so impactful in the spirit. And what you're doing is, is very, very, very impactful because you're working to hold marriage together. And of course, if, if, if the enemy can tear up marriage, then he can tear apart families. And he, if he can tear apart families, he can break down the community. And so it's really a, a domino effect. Um, are, are there times where you struggle with the work or the struggle with even writing this book because you knew that as a result, the, the warfare was going to intensify in your own life? Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. Well, well, let me start off by saying this. After I got done, you know, writing the book and the book was actually here in the physical form, I looked at it and I was like, whoa, I actually <laughs> wrote this book. And that was because, you know, I just felt like, you know, God was pouring into me and I felt like I had to pour out what he was giving me. So it wasn't it wasn't even so much so in the moment that i was writing the book but after i wrote the book i questioned so many times like okay do i do i really want to do i really want to put this book out there because you know you know i'm i'm struggling right now uh i'm struggling right now in my marriage do i really want to put this out uh, even when it came down uh, to the to this interview, there was things that that were happening. I'm just like, OK, like I'm I'm about to do this. <laughs> I'm about to do this interview uh, next week. And and these things are happening. So there was definitely those times where I just questioned like, OK, and then you get you get the imposter syndrome, too. Right. Like you get this thing where it's like, oh, you're. You've only been married. You've only been married two and a half years. Who are you to tell somebody else, right. you know, you know how to do their marriage? And 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not. I don't feel like the book is telling other people how to do in their marriage. Um, but but yes, I did. Um, I did struggle with that. But I think at the end of the day, what matters the most to me is um is my obedience is my obedience to god and i i learned this from a, a very dear friend of mine and you know she she was she spoke and she said you know how do i minister to to other wives when when i'm going through when i'm going through the same thing that they came and that they're coming to me talking to me about and you're really pulling from from the strength of god um 
at that point. And and so that's and that, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm pulling from um the strength of God. And and you know while I am, you know I I, I you know I'm all about the the spirit realm, but I do realize that you know we got to also be practical. We got we got to also be practical too. So the book also um, dives into uh, self care and like you know getting getting counseling for yourself, seeing a therapist and things like that. So so those things um, also help me get through you know my my anxiety of okay, do I really want to keep <laughs> keep trying to sell this book? You know I'm so happy you talked about that. I was going to get to that a little later, but I think that was so refreshing for me to see the part on self-care, to see uh, the part on counseling. And I know in the book, you speak very candidly about you and your husband going to um, marital counseling. And you also speak about you doing it for yourself individually. Um, What was your reasoning for going by yourself within your marriage? Because okay, I have an answer, but I'm trying to put it. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, because 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 I I had to deal with myself. Um, like I spoke about uh, earlier, when you when you marry your spouse you become one and there's things that that you got to be able to give up in order to in order for yourself and your marriage to mature and Mm -hmm. and i didn't want to get into this thing where or i don't want to get into this thing where i'm i'm acting like my husband is the the this almighty superman that's supposed to read my mind and just and just know how to how to how to give me joy because First of all, my joy doesn't come from my husband. My joy comes from God. And so going to counseling for me br- routes me back to that, that, okay, your your joy, your joy comes from the Lord. Like stop, stop relying on, stop relying on your husband to be, to be your, your, your Superman, your, you know, your, your everything, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta be able to, to deal with yourself and, you know, and get, and get whole for, for yourself. And so that's why, you know, I decided, okay, you know, I need to get counseling for myself. And then, and then too, in, in marriage counseling, you learn things about yourself from, from like your childhood. And so it's like, okay, at this point, this is something that I need to, that I need to get together, that I need, you know, uh, to be, to be set free from so that I'm whole in my marriage. That's good. Um, it, it actually segues way right in, right into what I was going to say. So what I did was I, I pulled out like four days, um, like four different quotes. Because again, we don't want to spill the tea on the whole book. I want them to buy this book because this is an investment into your marriage, into your life, even for those who are not married. Um, and if if you desire to be married, this is a great book to even just kind of see, as she said, where where you're deficient now before you even get into that marriage, before, you know, as you begin to prepare. So day four, there was this quote that really stood out to me. And you said, our husbands do not deserve the pressure of comforting us every time we are hurting. I thought that was so profound because you're absolutely right. I think sometimes we put a whole lot of pressure on them to to make us feel a certain way, to to provide that joy that can only come from God. Um, But I guess my question to you is, although we shouldn't have those unrealistic expectations, there are some expectations that are in place because I do expect my husband to 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 be supportive of of that happiness, to be supportive of the joy, um, to to aid in helping me to find that thing. So, what do you say to the woman who's struggling with finding that balance? It's like you know what I 
you you don't want to have unrealistic expectations, but at the same time, you you have certain expectations because let's be honest, we don't want to be in a marriage with someone who is not giving us the good feels. You know what I mean? So what do you say to that woman on finding that balance? So I would say to that woman, okay, so if you've made the decision to to go to uh, counseling for yourself and you you understand that, okay, my joy, my joy comes from the Lord and and everything like that, but but maybe maybe sometimes you feel like your your husband is not you know on the same page as that that's when you are transparent and you discuss that with your husband and if you need a a, a mediator if you need a a a counselor in between that so that you guys can you know express those things to one another i believe that that is that is how you find the balance and even and even in your prayer time um, with the Lord, when you when 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 you and and Him are you know are are up here in the Lord, you know what? There's <laughs> that means that this this is going to be you guys. So you know in your prayer time and in, in your personal time with God, you you express that you express that to God. You know you say God, you know I'm I'm. I understand that my my joy comes from you um, and everything, but you know I might be struggling. I'm struggling with this with my husband. You express that to him, and you and you watch, and you you get your your mediator, you get your counselor, and you you just you just trust God, and you um and and you you'll get get back those feels, <laughs> you know that that you have for your husband and that you all have for each other. Um, I know one of the examples you used in the book, which I absolutely loved, um, you spoke of being transparent in, in prayer as you go to God about like what your issues are. And you use the example of Jesus just being, you know, in the garden and saying, you know what, if let this cup pass, if it's your will, like this is this this is definitely a lot to handle. This is a lot to bear. But in that moment of transparency, you know that's where God was able to, to, to provide what he needed. It may not have been, you know, the answer that he desired. And I love to tell people that, you know, even if God doesn't change the situation, a piece of you is always changed in prayer. And I can honestly say, um, in my journey, it'll be 14 years for me next month. And in my journey, it hasn't girl by the grace of God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But in my journey, um, I, I've just recently, maybe in the last five years, like gotten to this place where I realized that I should have been doing this all along. Like a lot of these concerns I've learned to to take to God in prayer first. And then he creates the the perfect timing and the perfect opportunity to take it to my husband. So now my husband's heart is prepared. Now it won't end up in this disagreement or this huge blow up or this argument, which has not worked great in the past. But now the everything is conducive to have this conversation because you're absolutely right. The communication has to happen. Like, and I think that sometimes um, women and I and I've definitely definitely been guilty of this. Sometimes women we either talk too much and we we're popping off as wives, or we're keeping everything bottle up because we don't want to talk too much. And it's like, but where is the middle ground? Like you have to share what's going on so that it can be addressed and it can be rectified. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. But back to, I'm back to you asking questions. I mean, you, me <laughs> asking the questions, you answering them. So day number six, you said something in here and I, I love this quote too. You said, wives, if there is love in your marriage, I want you to know there is hope after betrayal talk a little bit about what that hope looks like after betrayal because i know a lot of women who have who feel betrayed in their marriage and feels like there's no hope and there's no way to move past it so talk a little bit about that um 
I will say this. It's not cliche when you hear a person say, okay, when you're going through, think about when you first got married. Think about why you got married. And I definitely, you know, had to uh, learn this from learn this for myself. Our minds, unfortunately, are 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 more attracted to to are are naturally more attracted to the negative the negative thing, right? So if we would reposition our minds to think more about the the positive thing, then I think that's what gives us strength to be able to see the hope in in our marriages, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Do you have like um like maybe some tangible steps that you could share, like maybe two or three steps, like something that worked for you, like how you really Get so so repositioning your mind is one. Like then then what happens next? Like how do how do we get to the place of getting to that hope? Because right now we're so hurt, we feel so betrayed. There's no way I can move past this. Like so, I've repositioned my mind. Okay, now what's next? You you have to make um, the decision for yourself to forgive. OK, you you have to be able to say like. You think I, I, I would think about it like this, you're when you forgive, you're freeing yourself more than you are, are, are freeing your husband. So I would say, you know, after you re, you position, you reposition your mind and think more positive, you you know, you but you still might be hurting you have to like to make the to to say you know what i am going to take that first step of of forgiveness um i know for me that was that was how i i i found hope in my marriage and, and believe me it wasn't it wasn't easy. It wasn't um, easy to just be like to just be like some. You know what? You know what? I just I, I I forgive my husband. All all is well. You know it 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 took it took me some time. It took me some some deliverance because because at this point you know you know I'm I'm hurting and you really have to let you really have to allow God to to like immerse you, to like immerse you with his presence and say, you know what? And, and, and hear God say, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm sorry this happened to you, but, but, but I'm going to turn this around for, for, for my glory. And, and you have to believe that. And you, and you have to, you have to know that. And so that's what happened to, for me. I, that's how I found the hope. Like I literally was like, you know, like naked and transparent to God, like God, like I, you know, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like Taraji from Acrimony. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be bitter. I, I want to be able to forgive, but, but I cannot do this without you. I, I, I want to, I want to, you know, be able to see the hope in my marriage. And I literally like had to, to let God immerse me and, you know, say like, okay, again like i'm 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 freeing you i'm freeing you from that i'm freeing you from this so that so that i could be able to see with different eyes i love that beautiful um and and you said as you said you know he he's going to get the glory from the story and i truly believe like this is this is one of those products of his glory this book you know that that pain produced this purpose so thank you for pushing through that Mm -hmm. Um, now day 14, I, I like this day too. I, I love the whole book, but I had to pull out a few, you know, just for the conversation. You mm -hmm. said I was too busy being against my partner because I was looking at someone else's battleground. 
And so just to give some context, your context, you're talking about, you know, comparison, because we live in this social media age where we are inundated with ish, images from everyone else's relationship. Everybody is hashtag relationship goals. She's posting what her man did for her today, what he bought her, where he took her, you know, and we're over here like, I need my husband to do that. And so, you know, this, I felt like this was, this was real. You said you were busy being against your partner, being against your husband, because you're looking at someone else's battleground. And I love that you use that word battleground. So talk a little bit about that. Um, not definitely not saying that the person, the people who, who, um, who I was looking at were, were not happy, but when I say battleground, I was thinking about, because no couple is perfect. Uh, the things that, that we see on, on social media, that is only a small fraction of of everything that might be going on in that in that couple's marriage. So while I'm over here looking at looking at this one thing, you know, and, and every and every uh, marriage has their issues. So that's why I'm saying I'm busy over here looking at they they battleground, you know, and and it's causing me to to look at to look at my husband differently. So so that's when you know that's when I began to like to to uh develop the mindset of okay i'm this again this is only a small fraction of this person's life and or this couple's life and i want to focus on on the things in in my own marriage and i again back to the whole battleground i love that because like you said you're over here focusing on um their, their battleground. Meanwhile, you're losing your own fight. <laughs> so it's like when you're focused on somebody else's battleground, because even if they are in that beautiful place, they have to fight for that. That does not come easy <laughs> in a marriage. That's a that's a fight, because as you said, this is warfare. The, the devil is mad. He doesn't want this to thrive and to survive. So that's a fight. So if I'm focused on their battleground, I'm not paying attention to my own battle. And that's why we're over here losing because our focus and everything is off. Mm. I, love, I love that you said battleground. I was like, yes, I love that. Yes. Um, and then the last one I want to take a, a quote from was day 18. And that's because you know what? Sex sales. So we're going to talk about sex on the, <laughs> on the today. Okay. Um, the, the quote that you said in here that I really loved was, um, I had to realize that a sex, a sexless marriage was not God's way. I want to spend some time right here because I feel like um, marriages, the, the, the devil comes and he, he attacks below the belt all the time. Like literally, I tell people like that's a literal attack mm -hmm. below the belt. Um, and I know I, I, and I can attest to this, you know, just in my personal life, like you can be living this life before you get married and you can be out here swinging and flying from rafters and <laughs> hanging from the <laughs> chandeliers. And then you get married and you're like, I don't feel like having sex. Like, I don't have time for that. I'm tired. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And that thing will destroy your marriage. So I want you to talk a little bit about like how you got to the place of one, like what, what, what was causing you? Cause I think you did mention in the book, like how, how did you get to a place where, you know, you saw like it diminishing in your marriage and then two, how did you get out of that? How did you work through it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'll talk about, um, this situation where, I was I was struggling at my my job, um, not 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 my current job, but um, a past job. I was struggling there, and I was bringing all of that. I was bringing all of that frustration and 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 hurt from what was going on at my job into my marriage bed, and so it be, it became. To a point, it came to a point where it was just like you know I don't, I I don't even feel like I I had a, a long day at work. I'm I'm frustrated. I don't feel like having sex. 
you 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 you're you're bothering me even more because you keep you keep trying to you know you you want to do this and I just don't want to do it and <laughs> and then it's just kind of like it's like it's kind of it was kind of like a light bulb that it was just like Dominique that is a distraction <laughs> um that is a a distraction um in pre marriage counseling we learned about about um this thing that they call shoes in the bed so it's kind of like your your shoes are 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 these different frustrations and these different these different things that you're bringing into into your bed and it's crowded it's crowded it's not you so you can't be you can't be be totally transparent and totally free with your spouse because you got all of this diff, you got all this crap you got all this crap in your bed and and so I had to to um, clear that out. And then once I started, once I started doing that and, you know, we went back to having sex, it was like, it was like the devil is a liar. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm missing, <laughs> I'm missing, I'm missing this, this thing because of something that, that was, was happening at this job. You get what I'm saying? Like, it was like, it's like the the devil is and and no and no way am i saying that um sex is the most important thing in marriage but it does is pretty important it's important <laughs> it is important and and i was just like you know the, the devil was keeping me from 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 enjoying this 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 thing in in my godly marriage and so you know, and I forgot your question while I'm sitting here. While I'm sitting here talking, hey. so I hope I answered. I hope I answered it. <laughs> no, you did. You did. You answered part one. So part two is. So what were the what were the steps that you took? So there there may be someone who's watching who finds herself in this um, place where she like she's feeling like you. And you know, it's so funny. I was just having a conversation with a good friend of mine, and we were saying how. I was saying how I have to be really conscious and she, she agreed with me. Like when I get in that bed, I have to literally like intentionally turn my brain off. And like you said, reposition my mind because I got to be present in this moment. As women, we carry so many things. We're like, I, I could think about what I got to cook for dinner, who has to go where, who has an assignment due, who has a, a program tomorrow. Like my brain can be in a million different places. All those distractions, like you said, all those shoes in the bed. I brought all the, my to-do list. Um, there was a movie that was out a few years ago. I think it was starring Carrie Bradshaw. I don't know how she does it. And it would show her like literally <laughs> in the bed with her <laughs> husband and in front of her was like a, a chalkboard and it was like her brain listing all these things that she had to do. And it's like, you know, you, you got to be intentional about turning that off. So I'm asking you, like, what, what did you do? Like, how, what were your steps to get to that place where you can get back to a place of intimacy with your husband? self-care mm. um doing doing things for myself that um that would help me de-stress um you know going to counseling writing um hanging out hanging out with with friends like those those were the things that that helped me to you know to 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 let go of 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 the distraction to 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 take I have to take my my responsibility and you know and and take care of myself and also and also my husband and we talked about this earlier also my husband being on the same page with me and and helping me to um to de-stress so that's definitely what helped me yeah, you know what? I think that um, being very honest and open in conversation, um, uh, like taking that to your husband, and sometimes that's hard, you know, what I found, you know, as because men, men, I think, you know, they're very sensitive and when it comes to the, the, the physical piece. And so I had to be open and say, look, I, I don't feel like doing this. I'm struggling. So I but I need your help. And I think that that's why it's so mm -hmm. important to understand that in a marriage, that's your help me like you we're here to help each other meet 
meet some goals, <laughs> meet, meet, meet God's agenda. Like help, let's help meet these, meet these bills, meet these kids, meet everything, meet these physical, these mental, these emotional needs. And so let's be honest. So how can I help you? How can you help me? And it's really important to have that support. And so I feel like, you know, um, you know, we, we, you have to take responsibility, but I'm willing to venture out and say that your husband got to take some responsibility too in the situation. Like we all have to take our responsibility so that we can meet this thing. And I think you also said that you went back to counseling during that time too, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Hey, like there, there are definitely ways to, to get to this. And, um, I was, I had a revelation a few weeks ago. I don't remember what I was doing, but I think I may have been journaling because writing is one of my ways of kind of de-stressing too, and just kind of journaling my prayers. And God literally spoke to me about, um, about making how, you know, we, we, we say this term make love all the time, but like, when you really think about that, that's why the devil fights there so hard. Every time you connect with your husband, you literally make love. Like you create, mm -hmm. you have the ability and the power to create love. That's why it's like, and I can really look back on different points in my marriage and like different times where we may have been like, just kind of at each other's throats and, and, and just constantly picking at each other. And I can look at those moments and say, yeah, and guess what was lacking too? The sex, because what I promise you, a whole lot of your problems can be worked out in that bed. I tell people that all the time, like, what is new? <laughs> I appreciate you for putting that in here and being very candid about it, because sometimes it's a conversation that doesn't happen, you know, in in in, in the spiritual world, in the churches. Like, we, it's kind of taboo, but these marriages are falling apart because people around here acting like that's not important. And I saw somebody say on here, it's right up there with air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I always say I've always said that that sex is the the closest thing to the feeling the Holy Spirit. Nothing trumps the the Holy Spirit, but I'm telling you, like godly love making is <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah. people are oh God, because he, he might <laughs> <up with them. laughs> Yeah, you know, I heard um it was so funny. I was thinking about this years ago. This is before Tiffany Haddish became who she is. Um, she was still on her journey, but she was on this show that uh Tyrese and Reverend Run used to have. It was called It's Not You, It's Me, and I think. And she said that her grandma used to tell her that um when you were like like having an orgasm, that's the place that that's the moment when you're closest to God. And I was like, hmm, I think that there might be some truth to that statement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for putting that in the book. Now I want to shift gears just a little um and go back to the very beginning of the book to the dedication. And you dedicated this devotional to Mark and Rhonda, who gave you and your husband, Corey, the most valuable gems of marriage. Um, talk a little bit about that, because I, I felt like when I read that, that maybe Rhonda and Mark were uh, marriage mentors or a more seasoned couple who poured into you. Like, how did you get into this relationship with them? Like, what, what are your thoughts on having marriage mentors? Okay, so yes, um, Mark and uh, Rhonda were our... Um, our uh, pre-marriage counselors and and they are um, very important um, to us in our marriage because they re they revealed some things about us that helped us to dodge bullets in our marriage um, and that's why I am an advocate for for pre-marriage counseling because while while you you're not going to to foresee everything that happens in your marriage it it allows you to 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 have those candid um conversations that are needed it allows you it gives you a chance to 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 say okay what do what do I what don't I want to take into my marriage what um, do I need um, deliverance from before I bring it um, into my marriage? And so they really um, helped helped us to um, to uh, mature and helped us to you know take a, a a hard look at at ourselves and say you know um, do we really want this? And we and we really did obviously. 
Um, but but yes, I I they are important because they they helped us to to dodge a lot of bullets um, in our marriage. So was this just a natural connection? Did you go out seeking marriage mentors or like how did that happen for people who like are interested? Because I know some people they're like, you know, I wish I knew older couples that I could glean from. Like, was this was it just a natural progression of a relationship or? Yeah. So um, so before we um, met um, Mark and Rhonda, um, Corey and I were um, in the process of of finding a, a church home. And um, so uh, a friend of mine, um, we, we had um, started um, uh, visiting um, a, a Christian Life Center in uh, Tinley Park. And um, a friend of mine was like, you know, they have, um, and, and we wanted, we wanted um, pre-marriage counseling. Um, and a friend of mine was like, you know, they, they have this, they have this thing called um, Entwined at, uh, at, at CLC where um, they, um, they match you with um, marriage, with pre-marriage counselors. And so um, we went to um, Entwined at a Christian Life Center and um, we took um, these, I, I was about to say compatibility tests, but they're not, they're not compatibility tests. I'm sorry, I can't remember um, exactly what those tests were, um, but that helped us to uh, match up with, um, with Mark and Rhonda. I guess they were, ba they they were based on uh -huh. our um, life experiences, and they mm -hmm. matched us with the person who, with people who might be able to help us. So, so to answer to answer the question of how to find um, marriage counselors, pre marriage counseling um, um, through a church, okay. um, you know, or or you know, I would say um, definitely like like seek the Lord and say God um, help me find help us find uh, a couple who, who we can look up to, uh, a, a couple who, who wouldn't mind um, mentoring us. And so that, that was also um, a part of our prayer too. So we found um, Mark and Rhonda um, through uh, church. Very good. All right. Um, ooh, I, I could talk about this for days. I just, I love marriage. I love being a wife. Um, Me too. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end it with this because uh, I know we're, we're about to embark on wedding season. Like, you know, it's, everyone's about to start getting married. Are, all the people who were engaged last year. I actually have two weddings myself to attend, like within three weeks apart of each other. What is one piece of advice? And I know you've probably learned some things over these last two and a half years, but what's one piece of advice you would give to women who are about to take this journey? Oh, it's so hard to choose one. <laughs> I know. Um, hmm. Well, the thing that is blaring in my mind right now is um, forgiveness. Um, um, life is is too short to. Um, to hold on to things that that you might um, do to each other, because really, uh, it's things things are gonna happen where you're gonna you're gonna have to forgive each other. So why not learn how to how to forgive now, and you know take that with you um, in your in your marriage, and remember that when you when you're when you're forgiving your your spouse. You're freeing yourself um, more than you you are freeing your spouse. So mm -hmm. forgiveness, forgiveness will definitely you know like help you um, to let go of those things and 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 help you to to mature. So I would say forgive. And I think that's an one because both of you are going to hurt each other at some point in your marriage. Like it's just in, inevitable. So I, I think that forgiveness is a great one. Uh, one of the things that we ask everyone who comes down to the author's tea, because we believe that hashtag writers read, what is a book that comes to mind when you think of something that you would recommend, like someone has to absolutely read? 
Okay. Um, one book, because everybody's like, just one, just one. <laughs> I was about to say two. <laughs> I was about to say two. Um, so I actually have a book right here, um, and she was actually um, on season one. Oh, um, I love that book. I love yes. Um, uh, the Naughty Wives Club by uh, Kim Scott. And I, you know, I, I I saw the title and I'm just like, ooh, what is this? What is this book about? <laughs> um, but um, I I absolutely would um, uh, recommend um, this book to um, to um, wives or if you're um, thinking of getting married because um, she really it's a it's a it's a fictional book, but she really like. Um, dives into um, some some areas um, yeah. in our marriage in, in in marriages that people might be afraid to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Like um, one of the characters in here, she has a husband that, oh, who has P, uh, PTSD. So and and like I I had never heard anybody you know like like talk about um, things like that. And so um, that's why I really love this book, and I would definitely um, recommend it. Yes, I, I, I can co-sign on that. That book, The Naughty Wives Club, was amazing. I love Kim. Her spirit is beautiful. And uh, did, did you meet her on the author's team? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. This is yes. what the author's team is all about. Exposing you to people, to women who have written these amazing books, who have these stories to tell so that you can go out and read them. And she's absolutely right. Um, That book is amazing. I'm waiting on the next installment i told kim i'm rating like I, I know it takes time but i'm waiting on part two all right so where can we find your book and how can we connect with you um so um you can find arise the devotional for your wives on um amazon um right now and i am found also on uh facebook and instagram as at uh, Arise the Devotional. You can um, also check out um, Wives Arise um, Apparel. You can't see it, but I'm wearing a shirt now. I'm gonna stand up a little bit. It says uh, Wives Speak Life. Um, that is one of the shirts that um, you can purchase and you can find all that information on um, the social media pages at uh, Rise the Devotional. And can I say, can I say one more thing? Before before we move forward, sure. Okay. Um. So um, one of the things that um uh, I I talk about in the book is I talk about um Deborah's husband uh Lapida and how he's only mentioned um once in the Bible. However, we know we know that that was if you know Deborah, you know that 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 was her husband. So I just want to um to say that. Um, God definitely, you know, why I, I wrote, I wrote, um, arise, um, from, from a personal place. God definitely turned those things around, um, in my marriage and he used, he used them for his glory. And I say this because I, I want to, oh, somebody shared it. Thank you. Um, um, I say this because I want wives to be um, encouraged and I want them to be inspired because even even some of the you, when you look back at the at the mess that you and your spouse might have went through and you see God totally make a transformation in that person. You like you love you love on your spouse even more because of those things. So and I am a believer that God makes all things new. So I just wanted to throw that in there as um as encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. Um Dominique, let me just say this book, those of you wives, wives and waiting, get a rise, the devotional for warrior wives. I love this cover too. I absolutely love this cover of this book. Um, Thank you. Dominique, as I was reading your book, I really felt, and I, I'm a, I know we passed time, but I got to say this because, um, I literally got a word for you as I was reading your book. This book is so anointed. I could literally feel your anointing to heal and help wives, like literally jumping off the pages of this book. And what God wanted me to share with you is that, um, you 
he's about to use you to to change the game. Um, he literally wants to use you to help transform the way that wives respond um, to their husbands, and even to help change the narrative of of marriage and and the negative stigma that's associated with millennial wives mm -hmm. and with millennial marriages. Um, God wants you to begin to open your mouth up and speak. Like you've been silent because there are some nasty little voices in your mind trying to shut down your voice, but there is healing and there is power in your tongue. The Bible tells us, of course, that life or death lies in the power of our tongue and your, the tongue, your tongue, your words, they literally have the power, the power to, to, um, to, to save and to heal marriages, but they also have the power to destroy the curses that the enemy is trying to bring up and, and bring between these couples. And so it's time to open up your mouth and start speaking. It's time to stop being quiet. It's time to stop being afraid. God is ready to use you in that manner. And it's time to speak up. Um, he said that everything that you have endured in your marriage was not for nothing. It was not for nothing. Everything that you have endured over these past two and a half years, you feel like you've been exposed to so much in your marriage in such a short amount of time, but that's because this was the accelerated version. He had to expose you to these things, help you work through them, help you to heal because now you're about to help everybody else heal. And so do not be afraid. You got to walk in that thing. You got to be bold. God is saying, daughter, it is time to move. Thank you so much <laughs> for that word. I definitely uh, received that. And it goes back to what I was saying when I was like, you know what, do I really, should I really move forward with this? I'm, I'm struggling with this and that, but thank you so much. I received that. Um, that is a, that was my prayer um, for this book. Um, and I know, I know we're pressed for time, so I'm, I'm going to uh, keep this short. Um, but I also have um, a word that God gave me for you. And uh -oh. let me just tell you how deep this thing is. Um, God, God was like downloading it um, to me throughout the day. And I was like, okay, Lord, like, like piece this together. And uh, it's so funny. And I, and I went to, I went to the bathroom and that's when God, like he pieced everything together uh, for me in that, in that in that bathroom but anyway um so what i saw in the spirit was i saw a plethora of angels okay and these angels were were so happy and they were rejoicing and they had so much joy and uh as they were uh re rejoicing you were in the midst of them and they had these they had these 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 stones and they were like gleefully putting these stones up under your feet and and you were and you were like literally elevating and they <laughs> and they were doing that you were literally elevating and and you know god god i believe that god has a sense of humor and i'm gonna tell you why so i also saw in the spirit the lord was literally okay you know he has all of our names like already written in the book and so he was literally, I saw him literally checking off names. And these were names of women who you impacted, okay? These were, and God was like, okay, um, they bought Kristen's book, check. Uh, they spoke to Kristen, check. Kristen did her job, check. Because these are women who, because of your story, because of your obedience, they, they, they are going to change their lives um, around and they have secured their seat in heaven because of you, um, because of, of, of your yes and what you are doing. And the angels are around you are rejoicing and people, and people are going to, I don't, I don't know if people have already started seeing that, but people are going to start seeing that, seeing that around you is those angels. And in those times where you feel like, okay, God, like this is, this is too much. This is like a big mantle to hold let me tell you your angels are are happy are happy to 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 comfort you in that in in those uh, moments because they they are rejoicing because uh because god is just checking those names off the list because these are women that that you've impacted through your story so i was like oh my god this is this is so deep and so i want to share that with you wow 
<laughs> Girl, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless for a lot of reasons. And and Ariel even said it on here because I share something with her. And that word you said, elevate, I share something with her on Sunday about elevators. Um, so mm-hmm. I thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I praise Love God them. for that word because it, it is definitely needed <laughs> and received. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing. Uh, even when I can't see it, <laughs> I just, he always sends somebody to speak into my purpose. So thank you for being the messenger on today. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So mm-hmm. listen, after that, look, I know y'all better go get this book <laughs> go into Dominique McGee. This is her book, Arise, the devotional for warrior wives. I promise you. This is an amazing read. I have said that I am purchasing this book myself to sow into the wives that I know because I know that this book can change their life. It can change their wifehood and and help them to essentially transform their marriage. I just was on a prayer call yesterday and I was telling the women to be atmosphere shifters. Like we are called to be atmosphere shifters. We can change the the climate, change the the temperature. We can do the shifting. And so I believe you can even do that in your marriage. If you want your marriage to change, it can start with you. You can be the change that you want to see. And this is a great place to start. Dominique has touched on so many um, different topics that impact marriages. So go and get this book. It's on Amazon. Find her on social media, arise the devotional and support her. And so Dominique, thank you so much for your willingness to share, to be transparent. I have enjoyed this conversation and I know that it will be a blessing to anyone who comes across it. Those of you who are watching, if you know someone who needs to watch this, share this with them. Even if you don't share it publicly, send it to their inbox, but send this message so that they too can weather this marital storm. All right. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, this is The Author's Tea. I'm your girl, Kristen R. Harris, and we'll be back in two weeks with our next author. I love you guys. Bye. Bye.